Hi, I'm John Barker, Extension Educator in Knox County. Today I'm going to talk about scouring a field for weed identification. The weed that we're going to focus on today is Palmer amaranth. In our pesticide meetings, uh, really for the last several years, we've really worked hard and we've had live samples. Any of you who have been to those meetings will remember. We've had live samples of Palmer, we've had live samples of uh, pigweed and uh, water hemp. And we focus on those three weeds because, because those are weeds that we really need to be able to identify. A lot of times, especially when they're small, palmer and pigweed and to a certain extent water hemp can look the same. We need to be able to identify them when they're small. Okay, so that's why we've done that. Uh, in this video today, we're going to look at some small plants and then we're also going to focus on big monsters like this guy here and we're going to talk about how to identify them. Okay, so as we're walking through the field, obviously something that looks like this is going to get your attention. Okay, when you see a a seed head like this. Um, this is just a massive seed head. Um, and it's, it's one that once it gets to this stage, this guy's pretty easy to identify, but we're gonna walk through all the steps and talk about how to identify these. Obviously on this seed head, the first thing we notice is, is a, the multiple really seed heads on this plant and the size of them. You know, these seed heads can go anywhere from six to 18 inches and sometimes even longer than that, approaching 24 inches, okay? This plant, it's capable of producing a million seeds. So if just the sheer looks of this plant doesn't scare you, the fact that it can produce a million seeds, one plant, one female plant, one year, that should scare you. Next, we're gonna look at the leaves, okay? This leaf, as you can tell, is more of a diamond shape, okay? And you remember comparing that to a pigweed, if you've seen that video, it's more of an oval or more of an egg shape, but this is more of a diamond shaped leaf, okay? We, we check the stem. The stem is very smooth, okay? There's no hair on this stem, okay? And we can rub our fingers up and down on this and there is no, no roughness, a very, very smooth feeling on this. Same thing with the leaf, okay? As we run over this, um, a very, very smooth feeling. Um, even kind of a little bit of a shiny, shininess to that leaf, although um, that may not always be the case and it also kind of depends on your sunlight. Uh, but again, that's something that you want to look at. We're checking for hair on this. Okay, another thing we want to look at when we're looking at the leaves is the leaf structure. Are these leaves alternate or opposite? And if you look here, we've got one here, one here, one here. Okay, they're alternate all the way up this stem on each and every one. They're across from alternate of each other as you climb up these stems. That's another identifying characteristic to help separate that from certain weeds. Okay. The next thing we want to look at is the petiole, okay? We, if we break that off and fold that petiole over, you can see that petiole is longer than the leaf. That's a key identifying characteristic for Palmer, okay? If the petiole, this, this stem part here, if it's longer than the leaf, you know you've got a Palmer plant or at least a Palmer hybrid. Okay, now that I've pulled this plant out, you can kind of see the root structure here. Again, we've got tap roots on here. Um, fairly decent root system, which to support a plant like this, you're gonna need a decent root system. Um, and if we can zoom in on this part here, you can see there's no hair. It's just very shiny and very smooth. Okay, here's another leaf. And again, if we look at that petiole, how much longer that petiole is than this leaf. Okay, this is the petiole right here, and it's much longer than the leaf. That's a key identifying characteristic of Palmer. Palmer has separate male and female plants. Okay, what's that mean? That means that it can cross pollinate with other weed species, and we can start getting some different hybrids of these types of plants. That's kind of scary. Um, especially from an, identifying, from an identifying standpoint, because you'll get characteristics of one that kind of mesh with characteristics of a different one, and it makes it a little bit harder to identify. The other thing that does though, if I've got this weed that's resistant to, to certain herbicides, and I got this weed over here that's resistant to other herbicides, and these two cross pollinate, now I've got a hybrid that may be resistant to all of those. Um, so that, that's a whole nother problem with these, with these, uh, these types of plants. As I mentioned before, 
It's capable of producing up to a million seeds per plant. As these seeds become darker, right now these seeds are kind of a greenish color, they're not viable. But as this plant matures and these seeds start to get brown or a black color, they become viable. If you've got these kind of plants in your field now, get them out, okay? The best way to do it, like I've done with this one, is to pull it out roots and all. If you're going to cut it off, make sure you cut it off below ground. Because we found that if you cut it off above ground, it will just re-sprout, re -sprout, regenerate and start to grow again. And it will produce a seed head in a much shorter period of time once that happens, okay? So ideally, the best thing to do is pull it, put it in a bag so you don't scatter seeds throughout the, out the field and get it out of your field as quickly as possible.